Hey, what's up, my warriors? I'm sorry for the camera looking a little blurry as per usual, but once I get a new setup, it's going to be much more clear and we'll get things going how it should be going, but we have to work with what we have to work with right now. As long as I get the uh, these words out to y'all and, you know, put some motivation and some little pep into you, whatever, whatnot, that's the major, uh, um, that's the goal. So I want to welcome y'all to Self-Motivation Talk with your girl Chandra. We're back with another video today on this uh, beautiful Wednesday. It is a little windy out, a little cold out, but it's a beautiful Wednesday and I'm very blessed to be here, as you should as well, on this beautiful day. Um, today, y'all, we're going to be talking about what we was talking about last time. Uh, I already gave y'all a sneak peek of what we were going to be discussing, which is uh, you're more than enough. You being more than enough. So please stay tuned, y'all, because I'm not going to get my coffee. And we're going to come back and talk about it. Stay tuned with your girl, Self-Motivation Talk. So I want to get straight to it. Let me crack my neck a little bit. Let me wiggle, wiggle myself around, get myself together. Okay. I am so sick and tired of just people in general making, or not even making. I'm so tired of people thinking that you're supposed to break their break your back your spleen, go all out the way of doing things for these people and it's never enough. I'm sure you guys can relate. I'm sure y'all chosen ones can relate. All of your life, you've been around people and I don't care who they are. All of your life, you've been around people that made you feel like you weren't enough whether it was the things that you do, whether it was just, you know, partaking in a friendship or whatever the case, whatever the, whatever the situation is that you just give so much great love, attention to, you, you know, you, you water it, you know, like a flower, you water it, you take care of it, you just, you make sure that it blossoms, that it blooms. And they still make you feel like it's not enough. All of my life, I have been felt like and done like I wasn't good enough. Whatever I've done wasn't good enough. And mostly with us chosen ones, it boils down to we do our best. We go above and beyond. We go above and beyond. And it's still unrecognizable. You will be in the premises. You will be around people, right? And you will see those same individuals. Make them special. Make them look special. They'll be around other individuals and make them feel like they're everything. They're big. They're huge. And they, they, they didn't even have to do nothing. The other person could have just now came in that person's life. Mind you, you've been in a person's life all your life. And they always put you at the back. And made you feel like you never was good enough. But the new people that come into their life. The fresh faces. The ones that did not a damn thing for them. They get all the attention, all the love, all the praise. All the praise, all the love. And you sit back and you be like, well, dang. What was I around for? Well, what, what, what was I doing? Was I not enough help? Did I not do enough? Because more, more than likely, you'll be the one questioning yourself at the end. You will start to question yourself at the end of it all. You'll be like, 
Like, what the heck was it? What did I do? I tried everything I could do. Now you busting your head upside the wall trying to figure out, am I the one that ruined this friendship, relationship, or whatever the case may be? Or not even ruined, or, or am I the one that is just overreacting? You're not overreacting. You've always, like I said in the last video, you've always been the black sheep. I already told y'all the story about me going to the public market, right? When I, I went to the public market. And I bought one empanada. One. The guy charged me $32. And I said, wait. I said, I bought one empanada. How did it come up to $32? He said, oh my God. He said, did you get four? I said, no. I specifically said one. I don't know where he got four from. I have no idea. And then he proceeded to say, oh, I had a long day. And I told him, oh, I know how it is. I understand. I know sometimes, you know, our brains could be warped by the end of the day. I understand, you know. I'm a very understanding. That's, we chose it. We got all those attributes. Ain't even no explaining. And no, there's no explanation on that. We're very understanding. So I told him, I understand. I know I, I get tired too and sometimes not really thinking straight and end up messing up something. Because I, you know, I need some rest or whatever. I need to relax. But... Only then I started to think that, wait a minute, I take that back once he proceeded to ignore me again. I'm sitting waiting for my one empanada. And guess what? He gave everybody else their food, even the people that came after me that I even helped pick out the sauces for. A couple came in. They are looking at the sauces, curious. Me, seeing what's going on. I insinuated. I said, oh, you should try that sauce. That's really good. They're all, you know, potentially good, but that, but that one is really good to me. They sat down, got their table. Next thing you know, their order's up. I'm looking at the guy like, I still didn't say nothing. I'm just thinking, uh, maybe I'm overreacting. Another girl comes and gets her order. I'm like, now I'm looking like, wait, 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 wait. Am I always that, that, uh, how do you say it? Am I always that invisible? Am I that invisible? Because when I used to have anger issues and I used to explode on people, they saw me then. When I'm yelling and going crazy and, you know, having these entities come out of me. You're listening now. But when I'm nice with a smile on my face like this and I'm so, you know, I'm so in a therapeutic mindset. I'm so humble. I'm so nice. I'm so, you know, I'm in my creative zone. That's when you're blind. Not even you, my bad. That's when they're blind. That's when they're blind. They don't see you. They, they, don't, they don't even care. They don't, you know, anything good, anything of positivity. I say that before. I said that before. Anything of positivity they don't see it. It's null and void. They're blind. They don't see a damn thing. But the minute you come with negativity, that's how you know you're around toxic people. Why do you think I said stay away from people? Not people in general, but toxicity. Stay away from toxicity. Stay away from that. Stay away from that. Stay away from that toxic energy, man. That's why I say that so much. I say it so much because every time I was around the toxic energy and I would explode and implode and just get so upset and show it the anger, let it come out forefront. Oh, people love that. The negative, the negative toxic individuals, the poses, the cons. Oh, they loved it. They love seeing that. They like to see you when you explode and when you're angry. They love that. They, they made you break a sweat. They love that. But the minute you humble and you nice and you have genuinity in you. And you come in with nothing but peace and great intentions for an individual or for people. They don't see that shit. They don't see it at all. They don't care for it. No, nothing. It's nothing. But then if you come to them same people, because I tried it. I did an experiment, y'all. Let me tell y'all. And I know I'm probably wrong for this, but I had to. I had to show myself like, yo, yo, no, 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 no. This helped me be able to stay away from people. I gave a person a compliment, right? 
I'm standing next to the person as I gave them the compliment. They act like, do, 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 like they didn't hear me at all. So I said it even louder. Still acted like, do, 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 do. That's when I said, F you too, you ugly B. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up. Because I, I, I wanted to see if you would interact or if you would react to the negativity versus reacting to the positive stuff I just tried to tell you and it's still in you. I wanted to see for myself. So I said, you ugly B, that made you look ugly now. You look ugly now. Your monkey face, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going all in now. Your possum face B, you know? And I'm not I'm not supposed to say none of this stuff, y'all. I'm sorry. But that's I just wanted to have, see, would you react? Would you give energy to that versus giving energy to the positivity I tried to put in you? Guess what she did? She looked over like who I was talking to. I looked back at her like, you didn't hear me when I said the positive stuff? But you heard me when I said the negative shit. Make that make sense, man. This is this the world we living in, y'all. We living in a world where you can say positive stuff. You can give people compliments. You can say smile at a person. You can do all these great things that's supposed to make people feel great with endorphins all in them. They don't want that. They don't care for that. They don't care for that. You come with negativity, arguing, drama, nastiness. Oh, they all in. It's entertainment for them. Understand, y'all. Understand, chosen ones. This is entertainment for them, yo. They love this. They love when you mad. It's a show. Just like the real world, as far as social media and everything, you don't get no clout. You don't get no attention unless it's something sexual or negative. Straight up. And I'm a living witness on that. I'm a living proof of that. You know how much attention I got being what I was? An entertainer? I got a lot of attention then when I'm half-ass naked, right? You get a lot of attention, right? The minute you're trying to be a better person and go toward the Lord and, and, and see the bigger vision, because you know that's not right. Everybody leave your life. Everybody shun you. Everybody turn the other cheek. Because they don't want to see that good version of you. They want to see the sloppy version of you. The so-called whore version of you. It is what it is. I'm going to call it how it is. They want to see all those nasty versions of you because it's something to talk about too. And it's something to make themselves feel good about their nasty, miserable lives. <laughs> it makes them feel grandiose about their shortcoming life. I got so much attention being what I used to be. But then, when you try to change your life, you get talked about and they bring up your past. Why do you think I left my stuff up on my old platforms? I left it up there because I want the world to see, yep, this is what I did. And you ain't perfect neither, but you could change your life. And I want to show you that part. I want to show you the part of this rebellious part and then show you that you can become from this rebellion to this. Anointed. Saved. Changed. The Lord Jesus Christ, oh my goodness. What do you think he does for us? What do you think he gave up his life for and give us chance after chance after chance after chance because he know we're going to mess up? Yo, what, you think he made us perfect? No, no. We are far from perfect. We fall short so much and I tell people that so much. We fall so short from the glory, man. It's been times I pray to the Lord like, Lord, I don't deserve nothing of you. I'm a piece of crumb. I'm a piece of crap. I don't deserve none of your love, man. And you keep giving me chance after chance and I keep screwing you over. I cried to him because I was so disgusted in myself. Like, Lord, please. I'm so, I can't even fathom how happy I am that you gave me another chance. Y'all know I couldn't, I couldn't even be here right now. You know what I'm saying? I could, I could be gone right now, all the stuff that happened to me in my life. I could have been either off to myself or somebody else off me. I wasn't thinking straight out in these streets. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was worthy enough out in these streets because I had the validation of people trying to control that. They were trying to control that in me, control that fire in me that I didn't even know I had. Now, mind you, my bad. I did know I have it. I, I, I always knew I had a gift. I, I did. We all know, all of us chosen ones, we do know. But we just don't, we couldn't pinpoint what it was. We just knew we was different. 
We just knew we wasn't regular degulars. We knew we was different. We didn't know how to really express the, the differences, the indifferences or whatever. We didn't know how to express it. We just knew like, yo, why me? <laughs> why? You have no idea how many times I used to tell myself or scream out loud, like, take this so-called gift, man. It's a curse. I used to think it was a curse. And it does have its pros and cons. Everything does. But for me, honestly, once you get to know who you are and become so profound and loving on yourself so much and getting closer to the higher source, which is the Lord, Jesus Christ, it cannot stop you. People, people, people can't stop. We're talking about a spiritual warfare going on. Something that people is oblivion, oblivion. They have not a clue what the hell it even is, what it even consists of or nothing. In fact, you got people out here that don't even believe in the spirit realm. <laughs> They're that lost. They're, they're that lost in the sauce. They're that lost in the sauce. They don't even believe in spiritual warfare because they don't even believe in spirits. They don't even believe in energy. They don't even believe in there's a vibrational effect in everything. Everything we do on this planet Earth is based off of energy. Energy. They don't believe that. They don't know that. They don't care for that. They just live in this simulation called called life. <laughs> Letting people decide what move next to make for them. Instead of taking control of your own life, taking the wheel, taking the hand of your own life, grabbing the grabbing the rope of your own life. How do we used to play that game in school, tug of war? Grab the rope in your own life and tug that mug. Tug that mug like how you used to tug and tug of war. And with all your might, you pulling. Do that same thing with all your might. Pull happiness into your life. With all your might, pull negativity out of your life, though. <laughs> I tell people, the people that don't really see things inside of themselves, they're going to make you feel like you're not good enough, okay? Remember that. When people fall short from their own successes, their own attributes, their own life, when they fall short from that, what makes you think in your right mind they're going to, they, they are going to see a vision for you? These same people do not see a vision within themselves. So how, I repeat, how are they going to see a vision for you? They're not. They're not. I'm going to need for y'all to focus on yourself. Y'all know I was getting notifications on my phone through Facebook with other people that are chosen or woke or whatever the case may be. Trying to downplay us real chosen ones as far as saying, oh, you know, people finally waking up now, blah, blah, blah. People like that, I ignored. I just swiped it right over. Like, when you know, like I keep saying, when you, when you so vast when you so into yourself and figuring you out because of all the shit you've been through in your life and then you got people that are trying to come and try to project and project and say things like that you look at that shit and be like man get out my face man get out my face boy that's why we don't interact with people we say what we say we mean what we say and we don't change what we say because of what other people think or what they got to say i tell people opinions are like assholes everybody got them opinions are like assholes everybody got them and I'm sure y'all heard that saying too. We are learning to not care about the perceptions of other people. Because these people aren't going to be around you when you're in your grave. Let's remember that. I always tell people that we all have a date to leave this planet called Earth. We all have a date. We all do not know when that date is. So I'm going to need for you to focus on the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is creating a version of yourself that suits and fits your life. And as long as it's making you happy, I repeat, let's, let's repeat that again. Because a lot of people don't understand the value of that word. 
Y-O-U, you. A lot of people do not understand that word, man, because they, they, they intertwine in your life and try to put them into you. And it's like, no, no, no. Let, let's separate that word. You. Why do you think I don't care about other people? People doesn't say you. you. That's two different words. People, you, they, them. No, we're talking about you. Because at the end of the day, I'm by myself in this house. I'm by myself in this apartment. So the same person, the same pose that has something to say, where you at? Where, where you at over here? Where, where you at trying to help? Where your help at? Where my help at? My help ain't around here. You ain't around here. And it'll be the same people that say, of course, I ain't going to be around here. You got to do it for yourself. Well, see, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. See, because us chosen ones, we also know how to hurt your feelings because we're so big and knowing who you really are. We know who you is. We just don't go around picking picking people's pockets as far as, oh, you ain't shit right here. Oh, you so you got a lot of drama that you got to go through. Oh, my God. I, I can see your childhood dude, right, r r roaring through you. Oh, look at you. We don't do that. We look at people and we try to see the good in them, even though we can see the bad in you. That's the difference. People don't understand that. That's a whole other topic. We see the evil in you. We see the insecurities in you. We see the flaws in you. We see everything in you that you already know that you try to hide from us. You can't hide from us, baby. I keep saying that. Us chosen ones, we know you already without even knowing you. And, when, and, the, and I say that to say, I don't even have to know your name. Never met you a day in my life. Only thing you got to do is come at the forefront of my, of my, my vision. Just come in, in front of me. Just come in front of me. Come into the proximity of me. And I'm going to tell you about yourself. And you're going to be like, how the heck? You don't even know. How, what? You, you're going to be shell-shocked. How the, how the heck? They, and you got some narcissist individuals, when you tell them who they are, oh, they get mad. You see everything come out. You don't know me. Huh? I never said I knew you. I'm just I'm just telling you about yourself and what I see. I don't know you. I, feel, I, I can't help the gift that I have inside of me. I'm telling you what I see. I'm wrong for that? You know how many times I can go around telling people the negative things about themselves that I see? <laughs> it, 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 it'll flow like butter. It'll just flow. It'll be that smooth. Us chosen ones, it come out so smooth, we don't got to think about it. We don't got to think of what, what come back to say, what to say. No, it come out smooth like butter. <laughs> Straight up. But like I said, we don't go around trying to make people feel like they are not enough. They're nothing. You're worthless. You got so much dra trauma, drama, whatever, everything inside of you that I see pouring out of your cup. You, you got to go home and look at yourself in the mirror because boy, oh boy, look at, oh God. You do that to a person, they want to fight. They be like, who you think you're talking to? I'm talking to whatever is inside of you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not talking to you as the, the body, the vessel. I'm talking to that soul you got up in there. It needs some reevaluating to do, you know. You are more than enough. And I say that to say you are so much more than enough that you are too much for them. Your light shines so over. It was overpowering their light. It don't make no sense. They watch was low. They light bulb, the watts was low. They got a low light bulb watt. You got that new energy watts. That the, the new light bulbs, the ones that got that powerful energy, the, the powerful watts, over 100, that's what you got. They got that 30 watt. You got that like 140, 120, and you know, you up there. But you got to understand, you have to understand that low vibrational people, they want to make, they want to dim your light. Always remember that. So they're going to nitpick. They're going to look at you and they're going to try to take out flaws and insecurities within you. But you got to you got to stay, you know, you got to stay calm. You got to stay calm and collective to not do what I used to do. I used to let people get to me to the point where now I am going to tell you about yourself because I used to be kind. You know, I'm, I, don't, I don't say nothing. I ain't going to put you out on front street and tell you about yourself. I can't do that. But then when you think you know me, now I'm going to tell you about you because you don't know me. You think you know a lot of us chosen ones, people try to, do, I don't know if y'all 
if y'all had the same um, experience. But I've had experiences where people would tell me, I just can't get you. Like, I just can't figure you out. I've gotten that a lot. Everybody that I come into, into, into contact with, they'll end up telling me, I tried to, I had a person tell me that I tried to figure you out the first day I met you and I just couldn't figure you out. I said, really? You told on yourself straight up. You just couldn't help it, huh? I tried to figure you out the first day I met you. I just couldn't figure you out. You never will be able to figure me out. I'm trying to figure myself out. So how the hell you going to figure me out? Do you not understand how big we are? How, how, how much power we possess inside of us of this gift? How the hell you going to be able to try, try to dissect that and figure things out of my own self that I can't even figure out yet that I'm trying to figure out because it's so vast. It's so big. It's bigger than me. You damn sure ain't going to be able to figure it out. But at the same time, I could figure you out in about five, six seconds, maybe five minutes even. And they look at you like, huh? Like, what the hell? Yeah, baby, we just stay silent. Like I said, we ain't nasty. We don't go around nitpicking and talking about everybody's flaws and insecurities and, and, and shortcomings. We don't do that. We don't do that. Because we know what we reap, what we we reap what we sow. We know karma is always in full effect. And nowadays, let me tell y'all something. Karma don't come years, months, weeks. Karma come damn near the same week, maybe the same day. Because the times are really, uh, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. So karma don't come like it used to. Karma comes really quick, like around the corner. Around that corner. That's why I try to still stay a good person. I don't talk about nobody. I keep telling y'all I'm not the judge, jury, or the prosecutor. I don't, I, I don't care about what you got going on in your life. As long as you are living a good, righteous life and trying to be the best version of yourself, that's all I care about. Anything else, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Because when judgment day come, I'm not going to be next to you when, you're be, when, when you being judged. <laughs> when you being judged, I ain't going to be nowhere around. You're going to be by yourself. In front of the Lord. Looking silly and scared. Like a little mouse. Looking around for where those people at. Where, where those people that help validate me. To, 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 to vouch for me. And, 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 and tell the Lord that I tried. I did good. Where they at? They ain't nowhere around. They ain't nowhere around. You alone baby. You got to face this by yourself now. So I look at life like that. I ain't judging nobody. Because I already know when I leave this earth, I have to be judged. You don't think he going to look at me and say, who are you? Who are you to sit up here and judge this person or these people? What authority did you have? What authority did you have to judge these people? When, when you, not only him, but you knew that your closet was filthy. You knew your hands was dirty. And you sat there, you judged these people over here like your hands was clean. Do you not know how scared you're going to be? When he tell you, I don't know you. When he tell you, I don't know you. You know how petrified you're going to be. Forget fear on this earth. Because I believe it doesn't even amount. Of course, not even believe. I know it don't. It don't even amount. To the fear of what you're going to feel when you face the Lord Jesus Christ. The fear that is going to come amongst you is going to be nothing of this world. Nothing. Nothing. I don't care what you think scare you on this, or on this planet Earth. It ain't going to be nothing. Nothing compared. Straight up. So I do what I do because you won't have people that catch the word and you're going to have people that don't catch the word. I really don't care. I just know that the Lord put it in me to say something. And at least when I get judged... He can see you tried. You tried to open your mouth even though I knew people were going to shun you. I knew people were going to call you, you know, uh, you know, you're blasting or whatever the case may be. They were going to laugh at you. You know, they, they weren't going to believe the word. They weren't, they were, you know, he knows. But he also is going to look at it like you still were supposed to do it. You weren't supposed to care about what these people say, think, or do. You were supposed to keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the bigger vision the purpose you didn't do that you kept your vision on people you kept your mind on thinking of, of what people gonna think about you talking about your father our father 
So I say that to say this, man. Huh? You got to be out your mind if you think that you are not worth it. That you the underdog. You out your mind. Because the people that you around, you surrounding yourself with, they are really the underdogs. They are really, they, they are the ones that are dark, dim, and disgusting. They have nothing on you. Nothing on you. But what do you think those kind of trolls do? To make themselves feel better? What do you think they do? They project the negativity on you. You are the scapegoat, okay? You are the scapegoat from their inner feelings, from facing themselves. You are the scapegoat. If, you know, if I don't have to go home and face myself and I can talk about this person or whatever or whatnot to make myself feel better about my miserable ass life and self, well, why not? Why not? Because I don't want to do the work, you know? These trolls don't want to do the work. They, don't, they do not want to do the work. But they want to bask in the success. I'm sure, let me tell y'all a quick story. And I, and I already know y'all know this story. The story about the chicken, the hen with the bread. This is a story that they taught us in elementary. They taught us this in elementary. The hen with the bread. The bread and the hen, the loaf, the loaf of bread. You had the hen needing help to mend the, the, the wheat, to go out and get the wheat, to help make the, the, the bread. To, the hen needed help. He went to all of the friends that he so-called had, all of the people to try to get the help to make the bread. Everybody acted like they were busy, that they didn't want to help the hen make the bread. When the bread was finished, though, and it smelled delicious, they smelled that bread. Mmm. Mmm. Now you coming toward the hen. Oh. Oh. Hey, what you making there? The same thing I was making when I asked for your help to make it. That's what I was making. Huh? It's the same people that are coming to you and act oblivious like, what you doing? Smells good. What is it? Mind you, they already know what the hell it is. Because I asked for your help, bro, sis. I asked for your help in hand. So you knew exactly what I was doing. You just didn't want to help. You wanted the finishing product. And that's what life consists of. You want the finishing product. You don't want to work for nothing. You don't want to be in the a, in a, in a dust, in the dirt, in the grind, in the slums for it. You don't want to work for it, for it. You want to already bask in the ambience of it. Of something you ain't never earned. Nothing you didn't fight for. Nothing you ain't gained no strength for. But you won't end, though. But you won't end. Do you deserve this? <laughs> like in my Chris Tucker voice. You ain't put in on this, man. <laughs> you ain't put in on this, man. Stop playing with it. Stop playing with it. Because it'll be the same people with an incident just like that. But it won't be bread. It'll be something else. It can be your, your purpose. It can be you doing chasing your dreams and making things happen. Getting to that bag. It can make it can be anything like that. And it'll be the same people that you asked in the beginning when you first started the process. I need help. I need guidance. Could you, you know, could you just show me in the, could you point me in a in a freaking direction? That's it. You ain't even gotta help me. Just point me in a direction. That's it. I I, I do I I I'll make it the rest of the way. They can't even point you in the right freaking direction, bro. But then they'll sit right there and act like, hey, what's going on? Oh, I see you doing your thing. Hey. Huh? What you mean you see me doing my thing? Man, I asked you to help me do this thing. I asked for your help to help me do this thing, to make this thing come, al come alive. I had to make it come alive by myself. And now here you go acting like, hey, hey, buddy, yo, pal, let's eat some bread together. Let's break some bread together. You know what you say? Do the same thing they did. Do, 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 Oh, I'm busy. I'm tired up. Oh, I got so much stuff I got to do, man. I'll talk to you later. Or whenever I get the chance. If not, never. <laughs> Straight up. Treat people how they treat you. You'll see a difference. People don't like authority. People hate authority. They don't like when you stand up for yourself and you have boundaries. 
And that's how you end up being the black sheep of anything. Because they really want to take control of you. People love control, power, power mechanism, control mechanism. That's what they want to do to you. And the minute you open up your brain cells and you realize the tactics, the manipulation that has been put onto you all of your life, only then when you wake up and say, bro, I don't need you. Because these, these trolls will do, these trolls will try to make it seem like you need them. Like you need me around. I'm important. You know, you need me around. And really, we think that because we don't even know who we are. But once you figure out who you are, you'll look at that person and be like, are you kidding me? You needed me all this time. You will, it'll start to reverse. You will look at the situation and say, yo, wait a minute. I'm sitting here thinking I needed to be around this energy. I needed to always come around and everything. But when I take myself away, I'm noticing that it wasn't, it was my energy that was bringing the light to the whole place. So if I take my energy away, that's mine. I said this before, y'all, it's mine. See, but most of the times, chosen ones, you don't see that light in yourself because you're too busy giving it to the world and everybody else. And you think the world going to tell you about yourself? You think the world going to say, oh, you got such a bright light in you, sweetie. Be careful who you give it to. No, you, you have maybe the few real ones that tell you that. But the majority of people, they want to use your light. So they're not going to put, they're not going to pinpoint it. They're not going to tell you to protect it. In fact, they want you to let it overflow even more so they can use you some more. You never were the underdog. You never were the black sheep. You've always been good enough. You've always been too much. Too much of a good soul. Too much of a good vessel. You've been too much to these people. So now you have to make some subtractions. You have to subtract yourself out of the problem. Subtract yourself out of the problem. <laughs> Plain and simple. See, now people, you think that you need these people because it's hard to face yourself. In the beginning, I can't even lie to y'all. I will be bold face lying. It's terribly, terribly hard facing yourself, facing a darkness within yourself and becoming the light so you can see the better version of yourself and be alone and do the work that's necessary. That shit is hard. And I said it how I said it. Very hard. Extraordinarily hard. But nobody said it wasn't doable. Did you hear me say that? No, it's doable. But it requires work. Hard work. Not easy. Like I said before, it's not going to be easy work. It is going to be hard work because it's going to change everything in your life. It's going to change your whole brain mechanism. It's going to change your body. It's going to change everything, your existence. It's like being reborn. So when you have a gift of being reborn, don't think that's not going to come with a price. Do not think that is going to not come with a price tag. It's going to come with a price. But are you willing to pay that price for the greatness that's going to come after? I am. Because you see the abundance of the things that you need and want, that is going to be so vast and it's going to be everlasting for the rest of your life. You don't think that's more important? You don't think this sacrifice is more important than changing the trajectory of your entire life for the rest of your life? It's worth it to me. I, I'm willing to do some change. I, I, I'm willing to work on it. <laughs> If I could change my life for the rest of my life and make a difference in the rest of my life and for my kids and everything, I, I want it. I want it. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. Only because I've been there. I, I've already been there. I've been back there. I'm back. I've been back there. <laughs> Ain't nothing back there. And now the older I'm getting, I see when the elderly used to tell me that. They used to tell me, Ain't, ain't nothing. You, you ain't missing out on nothing. And I used to think to myself, Really? They were right. You ain't missing out on a damn thing. Parties. They out doing whatever or whatnot. You ain't missing out on shit. And I said it how I said it. You ain't missing out on nothing. Because your happiness that's going to be inside of you, you can still have that same fun that they having by yourself. But it's more real. You see? because And the reason I say it's more real because once they leave that party or they leave those people, oh my God, the misery comes, comes along. The misery comes along. The self-reflection comes along. 
But when you already have those attributes, because you've done the work, now you can go party along by yourself, do your own thing, take a walk, just bask in your own your own self, loving on yourself. Now, when you're alone, because you've been alone anyway, so now when you really, you know, just go home or whatever the case, you're still good because you've been by yourself. You never was with nobody anyway, so it don't matter when you go home and it's more quieter, there's more silence. You'll be smiling in your silence and comfort in your silence, content in your silence. But the other people that was partying with the individuals, oh, they're going to be in a silence like, oh, God, I got to get out of this house. Oh, God, I, I need to call such and such. Oh, let me see what they're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Huh? Huh? We call that codependent. We, we ain't trying to be no codependent person, okay? We trying to get out of that. Ain't nobody got time for no codependency. Because then when that person, they, they that person going there, well, who you going to be codependent on? Huh? I'm sorry, y'all, if I talk a little fast, too, because I get passionate. When I get passionate, sometimes I start, my, my little Jamaican side to start coming out of me. I start really, I start talking real fast, but I slow it down a little bit for you. Or if you need to go back and watch this video a few times to really resonate or, you know, soak in some of the information, do so, please. I just really want to let y'all know you are more than enough. The more that I'm by myself and loving on myself, I realized that the power came from me all along. Not saying, of course, y'all already know the power comes from the Lord. We already know that's common sense. But I'm basically saying I took me back. I chose me back. And when you choose to take you back, I can't even, I can't even tell you, I can't describe to y'all how that feels straight up. I cannot even describe to y'all the things that I'm figuring out that I never even knew I could figure out because I was blinded by the traits, blinded by the attributes, the gifts that I had inside of me. Because you see, when, when you're around people and bustling things, we tend to be distracted. And the goal is to distract you, chosen one. The goal is to distract you from really becoming your better version of yourself, period. Really stepping into your purpose. The goal is to stop you in your tracks. To make you not understand and realize the importance of who you are. Because you see these trolls that have been in your life, these cons, these poses... They've been to who you were. But you think people are going to admit it? You think a dark soul is going to admit you're a great light? Huh? Give yourself that profound love, that profound joy, that profound peace. Y'all yeah. know anytime somebody say something about me, I just laugh now. I laugh. It's like, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure y'all can resonate with me. It's a tired feeling you get. That's why I laugh it off because I don't have the energy. Like the energy not even there no more. You know how you become so in tune with yourself where anything anybody say, you laugh at that shit. Because you look at it like, oh, you be like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I don't got time for this. That's how you look at it. You be like, I'm so tired. I'm just tired. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm so tired. You didn't go about your day. Go about your life. Do what you do. Because like I say, the, the beauty of this, you don't got to be around these people. Now, for the ones that do have to live with, with poses and cons and everything, the ones that do have to live with narcissists and manipulative people, pray on it. I'm telling you right now. Ask the Lord, please, in the name of Jesus Christ, could you help my situation to get me away from these people? Pray every single day, every, I don't care if you got to pray the second of the day. Ask the Lord, Lord, please, in the name of Jesus, keep him at the fore, at the frontal lobe. I always say that. Keep him at the frontal lobe of your brain. And ask and you shall receive. If you ask him, Lord, could you please get me out this house with these people? I cannot take it no more. I want to be close to you, but it's hard for me to be closer to you because I'm around narcissistic individuals that's trying to take me out and destroy me. I need your help, Lord. Don't think for one second he's not going to help you. 
Don't think for one second he's not going to help you. Because he's going to help you. He's going to, he's going to already be making moves behind the scenes to get you out of the situation. Next thing you know, you're looking at it yourself like, yo, I got approved for an apartment. I got approved for a studio. I don't care if it's a one bedroom. You want to get out, right? You want to get out, right? You want to get away from these people, right? I don't care if it's a studio. I don't care if it's a one bedroom. <laughs> as long as you make it cozy into how you want to make it cozy and, and homey, you will love it, man. You just love the freedom of being away from them. When I first moved out my mama house, I moved into a little two bedroom, one floor apartment. I ain't give a damn. I, I made that home, that apartment, how I wanted to make it homey and cozy for me and my kids. I ain't never want to look back. I ain't never want to look back. You kidding me? The freedom of having your own mental, making your own moves, getting to know who you are and dissecting yourself. Yeah. When you do leave, it's going to make you want to stay gone and do everything in your power to not have to go back. I don't give a damn if you got to sleep in your car. <laughs> it's been people that say, I, I don't, I cannot risk going back to that toxic energy where a person will sleep in their car. They'll sleep on the street because they do not want to go around people and deal with that shit. <sighs> Sometimes I look at the homeless people like, hey. Maybe they chose this purposely. Because I, I tried to help people before homeless and everything. And they were like, nope. As if they content being homeless. Now I'm understanding a little bit maybe why they're content being alone and in the streets or whatever. Because they look at it like, I don't care what I have to do. I'm not going back to that mental state of mind. I'm not going back to that sanity. I'm not going, to, I'm going, I'm not going back to that insanity. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. So they'll end up being out in the streets, panhandling, whatever the case may be, because they just do not want to go back to that energy because it's that profound, it's that deep. It's that deep. <laughs> so with that being said, y'all, I just wanted to say you're more than enough. And yes, I went in today, about 50 minutes. <laughs> I went in today, but I love it. I love going in like this more and more and more. Each day I do these videos. Because the, the Lord brings it in me. When I'm sleeping, I wake up in the morning and boom, I have a word of the day just come to me. Or I have something that I write down in my notes right here where I come and I have to, and I want to speak to y'all about it. That's why it can't, it dawned on me where you're worth it. You're more than enough. And that goes for, I was looking at myself, but then I told myself, no, that's for everybody. All the chosen ones, you're more than enough. We are more than enough. We're too much of a, of a bright light for these dark entity people. Love on yourself, man. You'll see the difference. And if you can't really love on yourself because you are around toxic energies, pray to the Lord to get you out as soon as possible. And be very, you know, uh, 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 true to that. Be honest. Let it all out. Cry. Be open to him. Be vulnerable. Humility. Experience all of these things. He loves that. The Lord loves that. He loves when you come to him with your head down. Lord, I'm, I need you crying and everything. He loves that. He wants you to do that. It's called humility. It's okay. He operates in humility. And if you do feel humility, praying to him and asking for something, you don't need to even be around or, or as far as getting to know him or nothing. Because you should not be embarrassed over our father. But with that being said, please, y'all, y'all know what to do. I'm going to say it every time. Comment, like, subscribe. For my uh, old subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in to Self Motivation Talk. And just giving me a chance, man, because it's very hard, especially for us chosen ones. It is a, is a, I can't even say it. It's extremely hard for us to be given a chance at anything in our life. It's extremely hard. People don't give us a chance, okay? So thank you all for giving me a chance, man. That's all I ask. Give me a chance. You know, people out here give people chances that really don't deserve it. 
and that'll steer you in the wrong direction and that'll straight flop on you. <laughs> and they'll disappoint you and they'll get, they get all the chances in the world. But the person, the people that will give you such greatness and go above and beyond for your ass, they don't get no chance. They don't even get looked at. They're the last pick. <laughs> but like I said, that's okay, man, because this is our season, y'all. This is our season. It's our season to win now. And the only thing that the Lord is showing us is that the people that so-called was for us, they are not able to come along this journey this time. This season is for you. You only. You deserved it. You earned it. They didn't. So the Lord is separating you so you can bask in that, not them. Love on y'all selves, man. Know that you are more than enough. You've always been. You that ish. You that ish. <laughs> Stay prayed up with the most high. We're not perfect. We all fall short. We all fall short from the glory. And we are all perfectly imperfect people. Remember that. Till next time, y'all. I'll see y'all. Please share this video. And you've been tuned into self-motivation talk with your girl. I'll holla at y'all. Have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed day. Peace out.